All right. Um, I was mucking about with some toner transfers because I've never had much luck with it in my art journal. And <laughs> your footprints. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was running around upstairs. Um, and I've never had very good luck with toner transfers. I have a um, really inexpensive black and white um, brother laser printer. And I have this because I'm cheap. Um, a black and white um, laser printer will print 10,000 copies out of, or 10,000 pages out of one toner. Um, a toner transfer, Rita, is um, when you print off something from a photocopier, it's printed with toner instead of ink. And um, laser printers, not laser jets, but laser printers, and color laser printers and um, photocopiers use the same same um, technology. It's a it's like a dry plasticky powder that um, adheres to the page with static, and then it runs through um, what they call a fuser, which is basically a hot roller, and in, it, it adheres the um, powder to the page. So basically, you get you know really clear prints and a lot of them. Um, my brother black and white laser printer will do like I said 10,000 in one cartridge of toner uh, for about 35 bucks. Um, so it's very affordable and you know it, it never clogs up like a um, bubble jet or an inkjet printer and um, you could take something from your inkjet printer print it out and um, take it and use it on a photocopier and get a photocopy toner toner print as well um, so I've never had much luck with my brother I've used I've used tons of chemicals I've got I have I've used xylene I've tried acetone I've tried paint thinner I've tried um, the orange cleaners and I just tried the goo gone and it doesn't work by itself but it works in conjunction with something else and that's where this technique comes in so it's kind of fun in that I've never had good luck with it and all of a sudden you know I was just messing around and I happened upon this so um, yeah anyway um, everyone thanks for coming by um, I did plug this to all the people on 21 Secrets so hopefully we'll get a few people from 21 Secrets coming in and hanging out and uh, checking things out um, so anyway there are um, a lot of different ways to do transfers in your art journal and um, one of the common ways is to just take gel or gloss medium and brush it onto your image. Hey Paula! Um, and so when you brush it onto your image um, it, it adheres to the toner I'm trying to find my scissors, which, of course, I can't find. I do have my X-Acto knife. Um, so it adheres to that, and then you can kind of scrub off the, the paper later. And I hate that technique. It's, it's really fussy, and you get a cloudy transfer, and I, I find it really annoying. So while I've done that in the past, that's not what we're doing tonight. Um, so basically, I'm just I'm cutting out my my images. Um, I went to a clip art page, and from the University of Florida's Technology Institute, they have a great clip art page called Clip Art Etc. Um, yeah, Aveline, that I, I have horrible luck with transfers. I've had better luck with photocopy transfers versus um, transfers from my, my laser printer. So um, I was really excited to see that this worked pretty well most of the time. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try some more experiments with these tonight. And we'll learn together how it works and what kind of paper it likes to transfer onto and um, but I, I'll show you some stuff out of my art journal 
um, and you can you can take a look at it. So basically, what I just did was I just took that eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that came out of my laser printer, and chopped it up into pieces. And I I gave myself plenty of white space so that I I have a place to put my fingers when I'm doing the transfer so that I can hold it in place in my art journal. Now I work primarily in my art journal on three to four different types of services surfaces either raw paper acrylic coated paper with just you know loads of acrylic paint on it gessoed paper and then yeah that's that three so three different surfaces um, and I've had good luck on two of the three um, acrylic covered paper and then raw paper I found the more absorbent the page, the better this works. And I'm not sure why this works really well. And I'm not going to speculate. Um, so what you're going to need for this technique is a bottle of Goo Gone. And this is, I think it has xylene in it. It doesn't tell you exactly what's in it. It just says it has petroleum distillates. Um, and it's greasy feeling, but what it does is it it removes labels, stickers, um, it advertises lipstick, crayon, and other um, gummy stuff. And this is it's got citrus oil in it. It says on it, so it's it's nasty stuff. Plus, it's got citrus oil to make it smell good. Um, so that you need that, and you need a brush. I have this cheap um, brush from God knows where. Um, I think it some, you know, nasty stuff that smells good, exactly. Um, it, it, you need a brush with bristles. And and not plastic brish, bristles, but hair bristles. This, it, it's a really cheap brush with hair, not plastic bristles. Um, and the reason that you don't want plastic or nylon bristles is it is because the Goo Gone that smell the nasty stuff that smells good um, will melt nylon and plastic bristles. So be careful where you get this, and be careful of the work surface that you're working on, because it'll it'll damage uh, tabletops, um, countertops, and other plastic things. So be careful with what you put the Goo Gone onto. Um, and then you need some medium. Um, I've done this with gloss gel medium to pretty good effect. Excuse me, but what I've had the best um, effect with is something that I bought for. Can you apply it as a spray? The Goo Gone. I don't know if it would come in a spray, but I don't know if I'd want to put that into an aerosol type far, form. Um, it's pretty nasty. You want to work in a well ventilated area. Um, so the the stuff that I've had. Um, do you have the spray, the the like foam? I don't know if it'll work. You'll have to do some experimentation to see if it'll work. Um, so the thing that I've had the best luck with is um, the Americana triple thick brush on gloss glaze. Um, this is it's in the craft section, and I bought it for my 21 Secrets um, glazes class to, to test out how the craft um, glazes um, compare to the expensive glazes. And I'm not sure, I'm going to test out also my um, my Liquitex glazing medium and then my, um, my golden acrylic glazing medium to see um, what works best. I've also got matte gel and um, super heavy gloss gel because I'm I'm running out of gloss gel medium um, and then I've got a bunch of different paper to test out too so um, I'm gonna do a bunch of these in my in my art journal I'm gonna do some of these in my in my various and other um, stuff that I've been working in so I'm gonna show you the basic technique um, first off and you can take a look the other thing is I use the same brush um, for all um, glazes and gloss gels and things like that because I, I ruin my brushes. And this one also has um, a tip that I can burnish with. 
but you don't want to use a plastic um, burnishing tool. You want to use something um, like a real bone folder um, or something like that because it'll melt the plastic. So I'm kind of, I'm having some allergy issues. I've been, well, I've been having allergy issues all summer long and finally my, my allergies are clearing up um, because we've been getting rain and there's, you know, nothing's in blossom anymore. Um, so my allergies are finally clearing up, but it's left me with some congestion. I'm going to switch, switch some cameras here. I'm actually really excited about this technique because I've had such horrifying luck. Um, I shouldn't say horrifying, but just bad luck with, um, the whole transfer technique, um, over time, you know, it's been, um, I've just had horrible luck with it. So to find something that for the most part works, um, makes me pretty happy. All right, I'm going to move the camera. Terribly sorry. Don't get, don't get motion sick on me. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> exactly, Aveline. All right, so the first thing that I do with this technique is um, I brush all of my images with Goo Gone, and what I found is it doesn't seem to matter when I brush the images with Goo Gone versus, um, like, I can I could brush um, stuff with Goo Gone the night before, and it would work fine, uh, or just as well as if I brushed it moments ago. This stuff leaves an oily residue, um, and I think that's part of the reason why this works so well. I need a piece of cardboard or something. Don't tell Uncle Sam I did that. All right. I added a part onto my tripod here, so everything's kind of askew from how I've been working. Well, hello, welcome to the show. All right, so here's here are my my images. I think I'm gonna do a a skull, and I've got this thing. I'll do a heart. I'm gonna do a couple of cows. Um, I've got a page in my art journal where I'm I'm putting some some cows on there. Um, so yeah, some cows. We'll do some cows today. All right. So here's my goo gone. Um, if you're gonna get your fingers in this stuff, and you notice, I'm gonna be really careful not to get my fingers in this stuff. Um, you want to wear gloves. Um, I am not. Um, I don't plan on getting my fingers in it so I'm just going over the image pretty liberally with the goo gone now some toners you're going to find um, will start to melt as soon as you brush it and if that happens with your toner um, then, then you could probably use another technique. You could probably just burnish it. Um, but you'll notice that this toner is not melting at all. And that's one of the reasons. Um, I was testing out techniques from the Journal Junkies. And I had tried the Goo Gone technique that they suggest. Um, they call it Goof Off or something like that in their in their book. So it's it's another brand of gunk remover um, and it didn't work at all for me um, so I just kind of took the transfer and you know tossed it aside and cursed a little bit and then um, 
I was like, well, I, I guess I'll try it with, um, I'm going to try and, and do a gel medium transfer because I kind of wanted the image that I was using um, in my art journal. I would already printed it once. And again, this is where cheap um, wins because if I hadn't been cheap, I wouldn't have tried it. I would just, I would have just printed the image again. So you can see how it kind of, it, it turns the whole thing translucent when, when you've got the goo gone on it. You really start to see through everything as you're as you're doing these. Get your goo gone. <laughs> oh, Aveline. And I found that this, I'll show you a couple of um, transfers from my art, in my art journal right now. Um, I found that this actually works pretty well with um, like line work, which I found in other transfer techniques don't work all that well. All right, so I've covered like half a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and I haven't used very much Goo Gone. Um, and this brush is now my Goo Gone brush. Um, pencil. So while I'm, I'm going to let these soak for a second. But like I said, I, I could do these the night before and let them sit overnight and the technique would still work. I let, um, the pieces that I was working on last night sit for quite a while. Let me show you a couple of pages out of my art journal with transfers on them. Um, so this is a transfer page with um, the sh the sheep is a transfer. I don't know if you can see how how actually really clear. I've got a shadow cast on it from my tripod. I mean that sheep came out really clear. I haven't added anything to that sheep. There's a little bit of paper that got stuck because I didn't. Those were areas I didn't get the goo gone on very well, so a little paper transferred. But that that sheep, I haven't touched at all with anything. That's straight transfer, which is pretty clear. Um, and then this is actually a transfer with um, where I I put I didn't use goo gone on it. This was the one I did before, and this is where I I was testing things out. Um, I used the traditional technique where you, you put um, the acrylic medium onto the toner and you let it dry and then you glue it on and then you peel off the paper and scrub it. Um, but you can see how the face is kind of cloudy and that's because the paper actually sticks and you have to actually like scrub it off with a toothbrush. Um, but this technique actually avoids that. So yeah, that, um, you know, I've got the head there about my allergies and then these these are um, magazine page transfers with um, gloss gel medium uh, this is for my my art date to Salem with my friend Jane um, and this is another one of the I've added a lot of stuff to it um, and again I'm, I've got some some of pages from National Geographic with allergens um, but this is this was another one of the of these toner transfers with the goo gone um, and the gel medium that I've added color on top of. And let me see these cows. Um, you'll see how with with the solid black you get a really distressed looking transfer. 
it doesn't um, work really clearly. So yeah, so these both of these cows, this one I've added some um, ballpoint pen to. Um, <laughs> Rick. Um, so yeah, so this one I've added some ballpoint pen to it to kind of really darken it in. Um, and this one transferred really well. You can still see around the edges because I, I hadn't fully developed the technique. Um, and then here's another sheep. Um, sheep show up in my art journal a lot. So again, you can see how, how pretty darn clear that sheep came out. Um, and then this is a page where I was just, I was messing around and on the absorbent page, um, it, it really comes out clear. So this, this is a grid pattern, just a hexagon grid pattern with really, really fine lines and the camera's not going to pick it up very well. Um, really super fine lines and, um, it came out really well. And then look at this, this de the detail on this face and how it came out. Um, and then here's a, this, this one didn't come out as well. And there's a couple, I didn't, I didn't fully saturate the image with the goo gone. And I let the, um, the gel medium dry on it too much before I did the transfer. So those are just some examples of, of how good this technique actually comes out. I'm really excited about it. Um, so again, I want to try a couple of different different things on a couple of different pages. I'm going to crack open my mole skein first and so let's see if I can get a decent um, yeah, right now these only have goo gone on them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a couple of of different um, different medium um, with them, so you can see how how the different things work. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the Griffin because he's small, and I'm gonna show you with the gloss gel medium. I'm just gonna squeeze. That was way too much. Um, so I guess we'll do a couple of things with gloss gel medium. <laughs> and I'm not putting on a really heavy coat. And you're, the camera's never going to pick this up. But I'm putting on a medium level coat of, of gel medium. I don't know if you can... Uh, you can see it a little bit here. So there's, there's a decent amount on there and you just want to, because you can see through it too. See, this is the backside, so you can see where you're, where you're going to place it. Um, I'm just going to put them right in the bottom of the page. Now, um, this is going to be greasy from the, the medium, uh, I mean the um, Goo Gone. And you want to get it stuck down first. Oh, and of course you can't see me because I'm working off screen. Um, and then use the edge of your bone folder to burnish it. And then you can peel it up and look and see how your transfer is going. And I can see that this one is not going per very well. And it does, or so far anyway, it does take a minute for it to work, and it does take some, I'm using some pretty decent pressure on here to, to get it transferred. And you just want to check it, and where it's not, where it's not, um, sticking, you just want to use some more pressure. Yeah, it's a laser print, Rick. So, this one, I actually ended up getting, you can see 
how much the paper tore. Um, but what I can do now is where the paper stuck and left itself behind, you can peel that off pretty easily. And that one didn't end up with, with that great of a transfer. And I printed this off at the highest quality that my printer would do. Yeah, this this wasn't that bad. Um, but you can see, you when this dries, I can go back into this, and actually even right now, I can peel off some of the paper that stuck behind. And it didn't it didn't rip, rip the um, moleskin that much. It what it ripped was the paper that the um, it it more ripped the um, the paper that the uh, the tr the toner was on. All right, let's try the cow. Watch this not work because I have people watching. And let's try it not gel medium in the moleskin this time but we'll put a little moo cow action into my actual art journal and I, I'm working in my art journal this is Stonehenge paper yeah I'm moving it Rita um, this is Stonehenge paper and it's really super absorbent. I'll post a link on my Twitter for the um Um, the clip art page. They've got some great stuff. So I'm just going to peel this up and look. And of course I'm not... Usually I get really good... Last night my transfers were all coming out like perfect. Now that I'm showing you guys... Now that I'm showing people... So it's not bad, but you'll notice that the the dark areas don't come out as good as other areas. So the face didn't come out. As good. So there's that. Um Yeah, I I kind I like the grungy effect that I get from this, the kind of rough texture and and whatnot. I dig on that. Um I've got a acrylic page here that I'll do. So let's put the skull on here. And I'm going to show you with the the triple thick. This stuff I kind of bought it on a whim for the class that I'm doing on 21 Secrets. Um, and um, I didn't, I, I wasn't really sure what to think of how it would work. Um, I mean, I knew it would, you know, I'd get a glaze out of it, but I didn't know how good the glaze would be or if I'd like it. So I, I just, I squeezed, this is pretty clear. I just squeezed a pretty fair amount of it on there. Um, now this um, glazing medium is actually not a bad value in terms of what what it is for what you what you pay for. Um, it's a dollar for two ounces, which is fifty cents an ounce. And um, I just bought some some heavy gel medium, and that was like a dollar twenty five an ounce. Um, so. Again, just place it. 
We'll see how it works on the... I had really good luck last night with the, um, the, the transfer on, on acrylic paint. I'm not very focused or the, you're not very focused. At, will you after the goo gone after you put the goo gone on um, you put the gel medium or the glaze or whatever you're using to do the transfer technique onto you brush it right onto the the image that you've been that you've brushed with um, goo gone. It's funny, this one is transferring in some areas, but not, not others. Like some of the colors of paint seem to be resisting. Um, Jelly Bean, I put the goo gun right onto the top of the image so that I could see where, where the image was. There we go. Now you can kind of see. That one's coming out pretty good, except for that very bottom. I'm going to brush some more. You can always brush more gel medium onto the image, too. Oops, I just ripped the paper. This is not my favorite bone folder. I don't use it very often. Which is why I'm okay with getting goo gone all over it. So, let's peel that up. and Yeah, that one came out pretty good missing the very top of the head but I think it came out pretty good oh yeah I um, like I did in this image like I overlaid it with a transfer from um, from a magazine and then added lines and whatnot to it so yeah I, I think that that one came out pretty good. I didn't. What I think happened up in here is I didn't get enough. Um, I didn't get enough of the of the the glaze, the triple thick glaze. I'm gonna try the Liquitex glazing medium next. I'm gonna put that on watercolor paper and see how it works. Um, so yeah, this came out really good. And then the areas where you've got paper, you can see I'm just rubbing it really gently with my finger and the paper's coming right up. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty fond of this effect and I've never, I'm excited about this because I've never had it work very well for me. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting for me to have it, to have it actually work. So um, this is um, a funny shaped um, watercolor sketchbook from Strathmore. It's 140 pound and it's um, 6 by 12 inches. So we're going to try that out now. And I took this on my, on my art field trip. And let's see, what do we want in here? What a nice rib cage. Let's try clean my brush here. Yeah, you know this is this is a fun technique for where when you just want to get something down fast or you don't you don't feel like you have the skills to draw it. Um, this works really well. Now, I have a theory about why the cheap glaze medium works better than the gloss gel. 
Um, I think it's water content. I think what happens is the um, the Gugon softens the connection between the um, paper and the image. And then, um, I'm actually going to use the back of this, the best effects with that last night. Um, I think it softens the connection between the toner and the um, paper and creates a greasy resist. Um, so the more water in the medium, I think the better it works. And that's how it was working last night. And wow, I'm not getting... No, no transfer with this one whatsoever. So maybe my theory is completely wrong, or maybe this paper is just not going to work. Let's try the moleskin again. It like it's completely sucked up the um, the glaze. Um, the other thing that I did last night that I haven't been doing here is I um, allowed the glaze medium. A few minutes to set up before I started burnishing it. No, I didn't. I didn't um, wipe the goo gone off. So so far, the um, the best effect has been to put the goo gone on in advance, and then use the cheapest glaze medium that I have available. And start out with gentle pressure and then increase it. So let's see. Yeah, see, I've already got a decent transfer going already with this one. I think that the watercolor paper is just not going to do well for me. Um, Rick, I just I used a brush. And I, I, I just wet the image down. Now look at this transfer. Now this one left behind a lot of paper again. Check that one out. Look at how clear that one came out. Of course you can't tell because the camera won't focus on it. Um, and then what you can do is any paper that's left behind, you can just spritz it or really right now I'm just rubbing it with my finger and a lot of that paper is coming right off. And it's it just sort of rolls and pills up. And again, I'm using a a really cheap um, black and white brother laser printer. You see how the paper has pilled up there? And I've just rubbed it really gently with my finger. Now I'm getting a little, a little more rough with it. Um, Rick, I bet I bet you could do this to wood. I don't I don't have any wood to test it out on for you, but I, I'm willing to bet that you could do this transfer technique on pretty much anything that's absorbent. Again, this this page is unsized, un ungessoed. There's nothing on it, um, and and it it worked really well. All right, let's try um let's try my art journal again, and I'm gonna use um I'm gonna use my satin acrylic glazing liquid and do another skull hey tpg clean that so so far the um glazing medium and then the ultra cheap um glazing medium have been the best so far in terms of transfer. Let me see. Yeah, 
I'm just going to test this on here. I'm going to put a little skull right there. <coughs> and I'm starting out, I'm starting out gentle with my burnishing. And I'm not getting much stick at all. Yeah, the you ca I can feel how the page um, just absorbed the glazing liquid, and then nothing, no transfer at all with that. Rick, I'm I'm sure you could use um, like an etching press for this. I think that that would work. Let me try. I'm gonna try some matte medium. I have had I've done a successful um, transfer in a um, what you call it press a litho press um, using um, a photocopy a fresh photocopy so I, I'm sure um, and with that you use um, what do we use Tur terpenoid to get that transfer. So I'm sure that you could do this in a in a press. Right. Retry the skull this time with Utrecht matte medium. It's already sticking to the page. I burnish gently at first and then build up the pressure. And you can kind of, and I know you won't be able to see it on camera, but you can see the black in the image on the back side as you burnish start to go, go lighter. Um, so the matte medium has given me a really clear but faint um, transfer. I don't know if you can see that. That's, it's really faded and kind of kind of ghosty. It's perfect kind of kind of Halloweeny kind of print. Um, you know, I'm not I'm, I don't it was a long time ago, Rick. It was when I was in college. So I don't remember. Yeah, it's very light, Sandy. Um, let's see. What else do I have here that I can test? I got some acrylic varnish. Let's try that. Try everything in my arsenal. See how it works. All right, I'm gonna do the heart with this one. See if how see how it works. The varnish is very wet. It's a satin finish by Joe Sonia got it on clearance years ago. Um, one of the things that, if you've been watching me art journal for a while, um, you'll notice I clean my brush off um, on my pages. And I know Paula does this too. Um, rather than waste stuff, Um, you could. Uh, I usually, I end up manipulating it in other ways, Rick. You know what? Let me get my Mod Podge. We'll try it. We'll find out right now if we can, Jelly Bean. Um, yeah, Rick, I, I tend to layer stuff in my art journal so much that, um, varnishing over the top of it, you know, I can tell right now the varnish isn't going to work at all. I'm not, it's just absorbing into the page. So, let's see. Varnish is no. Um, the matte gel was okay. The gloss gel was okay. The um, 
triple thick was awesome. The glazing medium did really well. The um, golden acrylic glazing liquid satin was knit. And what have I done with my Mod Podge? I might have to run upstairs for the Mod Podge. Um, what else do I have here that I can try? I, I, I want to get the heart down, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revert to my glazing medium. Kind of bummed the uh, satin varnish didn't work. So actually, a lot of the pages in this art journal um, are pages where I've um, I've taken my brush as I've been painting and cleaned it out onto the pages. So as I was doing my cloud paintings earlier this summer, um, I ended up, you know, completely saturating the pages of this journal, the first few pages. I'll show you a couple of them in a minute with um, acrylic paint and really heavy impasto. It's very textured. There's a lot going on on it. So basically I've learned you need something very smooth to burnish, otherwise your paper rips and then you damage your, your transfer um, underneath. Start with light pressure, work your way to harder pressure. Um, and then you end up with a pretty decent transfer. That didn't transfer. I know why it makes you giggle. See, that one didn't come out very good, and I, I think it's because I had the um, the varnish on it. Uh, the, but that's actually good enough that if I wanted to try it again, I could I could probably try it. Paula, I don't think you could get enough pressure with a with a brayer. I think that you need something like like this is the back end. I'm using the back end of an acrylic. Um, paintbrush so I can get some pretty decent pressure um, and really um, burnish it but the thing that I've noticed the Goo Gone is starting to um, melt this a little bit not that I really care um, jelly bean no what I did was let me let me show you here's the image I took the Goo Gone and I painted it on top of the image and let it soak through. You can see how it's it's soaked out all around. You can see the cloud around the, the cow. Um, and then I'm putting the actual glazing medium on top of it, right on top of here where the goo gone went. And then I flip the image over, stick it to the page, and then burnish it. Start out with light pressure and then heavier pressure. Um, this is um, this is a laser um, black and white laser print like a photocopier. Um, the the images I'm using are from a um, whatchamacallit rights free website. I'll put a link up on my Twitter e later um, maybe my Tumblr account too. I put up instructions on my Tumblr account it's Les Herger if you go to Tumblr and search for Les Herger L-E-S-S-H-E-R-G-E-R -S -S you can find my Tumblr account, and I put um, instructions for the technique on there. But uh, in the tech, in the instructions, I said gel medium, and really glaze medium, or gloss glaze seems to work better than anything else. So I want to put a cow. I think I want to put a cow on this page to go along with my sheep. And so I'm going to use. I'm going to go back to my glaze medium. And I'm using a fairly decent amount on there. And you want to make sure you have it brushed all over everywhere where there's an image. I 
don't know what that doesn't make any sense. These are not inkjet. Um, I've heard that some people can do it, but I'm not using inkjet. Um, I've never myself had any luck with it. I've never particularly tried either. Well, I want to put the cow over there, but it's kind of dark. On the other thing, after you you know put your glaze medium on there, you might want to put something to separate the pages from one another so that it doesn't all get all stuck together. You see me now looking around like an idiot for um, for my sheet plastic. I have I have sheets of plastic that I I usually use between my pages. Um, I you know so far, and I hate to admit this, the best glaze medium I've tried has been um, the cheapy. The craft, the craft glaze. How funny is that? Well, actually, I've got to figure out the actual price per ounce, um, like I did with the rest of the stuff that I I've been looking at. Like the gloss, gloss super heavy gel, was a dollar twenty five an ounce. The triple thick is 50 cents an ounce and I've got to actually look at how much the um, Liquitex glazing medium was I want to say this was four dollars for 118 milliliters which is twice as much as this so it's four ounces so um, it might be like a dollar an ounce versus 50 cents the only, the only problem that I have with the triple thick is that you can only get it in two ounce containers, um, which is kind of wasteful. Like I, I want to get it, if, I, if I'm going to, you know, start using this stuff seriously, I want it in a 16 ounce container. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't want to keep buying it over and over and over again. And then half the time when I go to Michael's, this stuff's out of stock. Okay, Sandy, you take, you print out your stuff on a laser printer. I am recording, Sandy. Print it out on a laser printer or a photocopier. Then you cut it out. You put Goo Gone on the image itself. Then you can let that sit overnight if you want. And then you put glaze medium on the image. and then burnish. Just rub it. So on this background that I'm working on, I've got a collaged piece of paper from my trip to Salem um, that I took and I crumpled it up, flattened it out, then I glued it down um, with some... I don't think I used gloss gel, I think I used the glazing medium. Um, so I had some nice texture and then I took watercolor crayons to give it a really distressed, grungy, dirty look. And then I used gesso to give myself a stripe. Yeah, I'm definitely recording it and I'll make sure that it saves. Alright, let's see what happened. Yeah, see, that gave me a really nice transfer. Like the really, except for that spot right there. Yeah, glazing medium's where it's at for this. Um, you can see on here where it pulled off most of the toner. It left some of the dark darks behind. Good night.
um, Aveline, if you look it up online, you might be able to find out what, what they call it where you're at. Um, it co it's, it's basically, it's, it's stick remover. It's, it's like, um, glue and, and graffiti remover. You might be able to find a, um, a website that gives you some alternatives too. I'm wondering if Citrusolve would, would work. I might pick up a thing of Citrusolve at work tomorrow and see if, if that'll work. Um, so I got a really good transfer with that. It's hard to see on the black. Um, but I did get a pretty decent transfer. Five pound. I think the one ounce is what I got. Yeah, this was this was two dollars. I think at uh, AC Moore. Um. So anyway, I wanted to show you some of the pages in my art journal. This started out with um. With a um, what you might call it transfer, a photo transfer. I haven't shown many of my art journal pages recently. Um, so this started out with a um, magazine page transfer, and then I added acrylic paint to get the water effect. So then I've got some painted pages, and what I really wanted to show you was some of the pages where I just took um, paint from my brush, and I just smeared it on the page, cleaning my brush off. The, my camera rig. I'll show you my camera rig. Um, um, Rick, my camera rig is probably the most talked about camera rig um, in all of Ustream. And the reason for that is is that um, the camera rig is actually a boom microphone stand. My, my partner is um, a musician and used to record with her friends. Uh, she sings and she plays um, drums, bass, guitar, and piano. I should get her to play some original stuff for my music. Um, so anyway, it's a boom microphone stand that I've got a um, knockoff gorilla um, pod um, on that holds the camera and I've got to modify my webcams to um, to make them work and then all my cords follow this um, you can see it over my head follow the boom down the side and then to my laptop you know it, it's the only thing that I found that works and here's the other thing a tri boom tripod like this would cost you like 300 bucks and this at Daddy's Junkie Music was thirty-five dollars. So, um, and then I spent seven bucks on the knockoff Gorilla Pod here. Um, so it was, you know, it was thirty-five bucks. But we already had it in the house. So now I've got two. I've got one for upstairs when I want to art journal up there, and I want to stream it. Um, and then I've got one down here. Boom. Yeah, then you got to pay for shipping. You're better off finding it local or ordering it on eBay. So, um, I tweeted recently about my, my um, decorative washi tape stuff that I bought. So I bought, I bought some Ranger tapes. And, and they all do this. They all friggin' peel. You know, they're friggin' expensive tapes. I got, I got mine on 50% off. Um... But, but they all peel off. So uh, for all of these pages to hold it to acrylic paint, I had to put the tape down and then use double stick tape to get everything to stick. They don't stick. Ranger tape, fail. Uh, yet again, yet, yet another Tim Holtz product that I've purchased that's been a big fat failure. Nothing against Tim Holtz personally. Just some of his stuff doesn't work. The masks I've used, don't like the stick gave up. Couldn't actually use it for multimedia. 
Exactly, Aveline. Um, so, um, yeah, the mass, the, the glue gave up on them very quickly. Um, and then these, these don't stick. I mean, they look really cool, but they don't stick. Um, so anyway, here's another page where I just took the acrylic paint as I was painting and smeared it on the page and then scraped it around. And then I've, I've stitched that to the page. Here's another page with the same thing. I, I tweeted this one. And I let everyone know who was coming from 21, um, 21 Secrets that my show is, is PG-13. Um, so this page says, glue shit to a page, torture it into submission. No, you know, I think that um, some of Tim Holt's stuff is actually really cool. Um, you know, he's got a bunch of stuff that has um, some gears and things. And um, one of the things, like another thing that you'll find, you'll find sheep and gears in my journals a lot and nuts and bolts and things like that um, I, I've been told I have a very masculine style um, so here's another page where basically I just took took everything that was left on my palette and and put it on the page and then this is just again gluing shit to a page and torture it into submission um, and if anyone doesn't know where that quote is from there was a woman um, I, IPG, exactly, great ideas, really poor execution, and they keep, my problem with Tim Holtz is not so much his style, and not so much his products, but they market it as a multimedia, um, they market it as a multimedia, um, product, and the fact of the matter is, a lot of it doesn't actually work for a multimedia product, his tape doesn't stick to acrylic, how can you market your stuff as multimedia if your tape won't stick to acrylic? Oh, it just, it peeves me. I get really angry about stuff like this because, you know, they're like, oh, our stuff is multimedia. It, no, it's not. If it won't, if it won't stick to acrylic paint, it's not multimedia. Um... You know, I, I, and then the thing is, so I've, I've actually, so I, I got really upset when my Tim Holtz really expensive tapes didn't stick to my acrylic paint. Really upset. And you know, here's what's interesting. I tweeted it with a hashtag about Tim Holtz and Ranger Inc. And not one person from Ranger and Tim Holtz himself did not tweet me back. That's really, that's bad. So anyway, so, um... Last week, I don't, I don't know, I have three guests, I don't know who they are, but, so last, last week, I, um, um, last week I tweeted about having a bad week, and then I, I, not really a bad week, but I, I can't talk about it yet either, um, so anyway, I made this pathetic tweet, and I decided that, um, um, that I was going to um, do some retail therapy on Friday night after I got out of work. Um, so I went to AC Moore and I had my, you know, 40% off coupon. But I always check their clearance aisle. And I found some Seven Gypsies tape. And so I picked up a couple of packages of Seven Gypsies. Guess what? Sticks to acrylic paint. They can say that theirs is... is um, is multimedia um, and I also for a very specific project that I'm not talking about yet um, I'm I'm doing a different style art journal um, and I'll talk more about it when it's more completed but I ordered some some tapes on Etsy to test them out to see if they'd stick to acrylic because once I'm done with the project I'll be able to use them in my art journal guess what here's one of them it it sticks to acrylic really well hasn't peeled up at all exactly Rita and and if you use spray inks on them which he shows but if you saturate them the glue comes undone from the mask um oh yeah if if anyone here hasn't been to artjournalingning.com 
Um, you should definitely go and check it out. It's a site dedicated to art journaling. Um, there are all kinds of um, free um, like classes on there. There are also paid for classes. Um, there are all kinds of like discussion groups in the forum. The forum is really active, lots of photos, lots of stuff going on on art journaling. Then go check it out. So then here's another thing. Um, this was, was it Pretty Tape? <clears throat> yeah, this was Pretty, I got it from Pretty Tapes on Etsy. And that stuck. But then I used the Pretty, another, like the stuff that came on the packaging. She packaged the, um, the stuff up really cool. I used it to tape a penny down. And then I poured glaze medium over the top of it. And not only did it not run, it didn't peel, but it stayed perfect underneath the glaze medium. <clears throat> um, so that's, I'm going to enable links. Aveline, you're going to put, Aveline, I just put, I made you so you can put the link up. <clears throat> so anyway, these tapes not only stick to acrylic paint, but then I can pour um, um, you, you can pour glaze over it and it doesn't affect it. No problem, Maeve. Um, so that makes me happy. The, well, Rick, here you want you want something. You um, the idea to spend big dollars to be in an artist crowd. My friend Jane and I are scheduling art field trips every two weeks and I'm encouraging people to schedule their own art field trips and post it up on art journaling name you know send me send me information and I'll post it up um, and that way if people want to get together and hang out and art journal together um, they can um, so and I'm posting every every time um, Jane and I go out for one of our art journaling trips. Um, I'm in Massachusetts. I post it to Art Journaling Ning so that other people, I put it up there as an event and let people know that there's, you know, you can come and you can, you can sketch with us. You can walk around Salem with us. You can hang out at the, at the museum with us. You know, we're, we're doing all these things. So every two weeks we're, we're making it a point to hang out, talk about art, draw, art journal, and, and do art things together, you know, as well as drink coffee and bitch about work and other things. But, <laughs> um, but my, the, like my idea is that everyone, if they want to, they can post, they can put something up on art journaling Ning, um, and find people. And I also, I discovered meetup, M E E T U P. I think it's dot com, And, um, there's an art journaling meetup group in my area that meets in Burlington at the Panera um, once a month. Yeah, so you know there are all kinds of things, you know, and I'm I've been planning on doing an art field up field trip meetup group, um, and I think that would be really cool. But yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> one of my biggest gripes is people who market their stuff as um, mixed media, and it's really not. So here's another page where I just, I scraped and smeared paint onto it. My camera doesn't seem to be... No, that's a little better. <clears throat> um, so this one's got little envelope that um, now the Tim Holtz tapes stick really well to paper but notice I've used seven gypsies tapes all around this to hold it to the page and I put the Tim Holtz tapes on top of it and then I did I, did, I was able to glaze those and then that's got a little card in there and then over here I've got a little fold out piece And then here I've got, I've got the toner transfer. This was all, um, 
again, paint that I just smeared on here for my art journal, for my painting. I absolutely think that they market it as multimedia to get more sales. And that's what really bothers me. Don't don't market it as multimedia if, if it won't actually work for multimedia. Test it first and, and look at look at how people like me and Paula and Aveline, Natasha and every Rita, how all of us use multimedia um, before you actually say that your product will work with it. Because if it doesn't work with it, guess what? I'm really anti Tim Holtz products now except for his inks you know that's I would never buy another one of his tapes or I will never buy another one of his tapes I won't buy any of his masks anymore I won't I won't you know there's a lot of stuff of his that I won't buy I look at it because you know he's got some some cool French curves and things you know he's got he's got a lot of stuff and it's really frustrating for me to spend ten dollars on something and then not have it perform <clears throat> yeah, but that's why I'm a multimedia artist and not a scrapbooker. You know, not and don't take that as a negative thing against scrapbooking. It's Sandy, multimedia means that I don't I don't work in any one media, meaning I work in paint, I work in ink, I work in, in graphite. I work in collage like I if you open my journal and you look at it you couldn't say that it's painting drawing or collage or printing it's it's all of the above and for me especially following the tools that were marked um, you know and part part of multimedia is is breaking the rules I think so you know when you when you're marketing something as multimedia, it it better also. <laughs> um, um, it better it better work not only with paper, but it better work. Um, I, I agree, Natasha. That is aggravating too. Um, one of my other things is when people use the term upcycle um, to to really mean that they just recycled something. Upcycling is when when you take something like like the banners that I use and you cut them up and and like what I do with my sketchbook, like the books that I make, I take the vinyl banners, I cut them up, and I create something new. That's upcycling. Cleaning out an old vintage suitcase and spray painting on the side of it is not upcycling. Yeah. So anyway, my, my gripe is that like Seven Gypsies tape sticks sticks to um, acrylic paint. It sticks to glazing medium. It sticks to ink. It sticks to paper. That's multimedia. <clears throat> Tim Holtz tape won't even stick to itself. How can you call that multimedia? I just don't understand. I feel scammed every time something does that. Some so like I feel scammed. Um, this page again. I scrub my brush out into it. Yet, yeah. Christie's phone's ringing. Um, collaged onto it. I use some a Cricut die cut. Um, the toner transfer, then an image transfer. Yeah, well, the fact that no one from Ranger even responded to my, my tweet was kind of annoying to me. And then this, this page is, it's got a background of, of paint and whatnot. Um, and then I've got all these foldouts on it about stuff that I saw when I was in Salem. Yeah, you know, he but you know what? Um he actually has a lot in the product development. Granted, it's mostly the design work. Um I don't know. <laughs> the swivel clasps. Yes, they do sell those in the in the fishing department. Uh this page is again, it's the same thing. 
um, I cleaned my brush out, I had gesso on it, and then I took um, watercolor crayons and just scribbled it all over the page. I thought he was gay. I'm not, I really shouldn't say that on camera. I didn't say that. Um, so yeah, anyway, there's my rant. So now, and all of the tapes that I've bought, except for the Ranger tapes, have stuck to everything. Every single one of them. Have, have stuck to everything I've tried sticking them to. <laughs> you know, I haven't done a journal flip since last winter. <laughs> um, and I've got, I've, I've probably finished like four journals since last winter. So I've got, I've got 10 tons of journals to go through and do, um, um, to do some journal flips. Well, I have my other journal down here too. This is actually the last, I did this one last winter. So in the front of all of my journals, I, or in the back, I always have a calendar. I think he looks gay. Why is no one responding to that? I think he bats for my team. So this one is a lot of writing. Autodesk will buy me lunch and give me tons of free stuff. Wait a minute. They censor the word gay? Seriously? I don't like that. I can't believe they censor the word gay. You stream, you suck. Um, yeah, anyway, this is just, this is a lot of writing with watercolor. And then some, uh, big collage pieces. So actually, some of my, my last YouTube videos came out of this. You know, Rick, you might be pissing me off a little bit. I was looking for this. It's my mask. Yeah, it won't come out. See, here's some. These are these are toner transfers too, but from a um, from a transparency. Uh, this is the only other way that I've had really good uh, toner transfers is to print them on a um, inkjet transparency with my laser printer and then um, transfer it in here. So 
Some of this stuff is from back when I still liked Susie Blue. And this is from last year's um, Nano Jomo. Which is called this one, Rita? No, that's a transfer. Um, no, Natasha. And hmm. Um, large one. This one? I did draw that one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah, Rita, I did draw that one. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into my rant right now. <laughs> um, I've I've decided through time that I should better. Um, that that would, yeah. Look at my. Search my blog. You'll you'll find some more information. On it. Oh, huh. Speaking of Susie Blue, <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I'm, my art journal tends to be reactionary, <laughs> um, the I is all, is repetitive, um, I wrote the same word over and over, beauty, um, and that was for, um, Nano Jomo last year. Um, if you haven't, um, <laughs> um, Rick, you've never seen this video of mine with the sheep? <laughs> um, yeah, Nano Jomo is coming up next month, and that's on Don D. Sokol's, um, blog. Um, she does a prompt a day. And the idea is that you work in your art journal, not necessarily create a whole page. I did a page almost every day for Nano Jomo, and it was insane. And I was working in this art journal, and this is it's eight by eight, so it's it's is it eight by eight? No, it's six six by eight. Yeah, six by eight. So the the pages are, you know, it that's a big spread. Um, these pages are really sticking. I never waxed these. Uh, that was that. That one was Unity. That one was Clarity. And that, that's just a junk page. I didn't like what was going on, so I skipped it. Um, and a page about drinking. And then this one, um, for those of you who have never been to my show, I am I am very openly gay. And I have been with my partner for over 10 years now. Um, we met in December of 1999. And at one point we, we took a, we took an extended break, but um, we've lived together since, um, when did I move back? It, since 2003. And we bought a house together, so we've been together for a long time. Well, um, Christy's mother, my mother-in-law, died, um, Natasha, uh, search for Dawn D. Sokol. I think that, or Doodle Diary, she's the author of Doodle Diary. Um, so anyway, my father-in-law, um, got remarried, uh, last November, and, Rita, I'm 34. Um, so when, when he got married and he called Christy to invite her, um, he specifically uninvited me. Because normally when there's a family event, I am invited. Um, but because 
he is a fundamentalist Christian. Um, he felt it necessary to be sure that Christy know that I was not welcome at his wedding. Um, so, uh, this, this whole page was, was all about that. And the funny thing is that I get along with his, his new wife and, and, um, it was just kind of odd. I, I just had assumed that, um, that I would be invited. I knew that they were getting remarried, but I was really shocked that they specifically disinvited me. So this is actually, this page is from one of my, um, YouTube videos where I did some grunge page. Oh, Rita, that's sweet. And Katisa, thank you. Um, so anyway, um, this is, this actual page is I was thinking about Ning, and this is this is around when I created Ning. I actually um, created Ning in response to this event. Um, so yeah, so so I created art journaling Ning in response to this event that that created this page. Um, and then this is. Um, this page is actually the art journaling Ning kind of mascot. Yeah, you know, um, I'm not necessarily as bothered. I, I, I was not. I say I was surprised by his behavior, but I'm I'm not overly so, if that makes sense. Like I. It wasn't unexpected. It was kind of like a roll of the dice um, as to whether or not I would be invited. Well, you know, the great thing about it is, is um, it, it, well, I shouldn't say great. Um, I, I now feel okay that I don't have to have his wedding picture up in the house because if I'm not invited to it, uh, you know, if he's going to be like that, I'm not celebrating it in my home. Yeah, you know, he's actually, he's he's fairly nice to me. It's just when it comes down to stuff like that, you know, it is what it is. And, but my family's completely the opposite. My family is, they, they love Christy. Um, so, actually, this is the final page about the blowout event that art journaling Ning kind of came out from. So this is the art journaling is for everyone page. And I did a video, there's a video about this one too, start to finish. What, what do you mean, Rick, what happened? Um, uh, for those of you who haven't um, found Daisy Yellow yet, um, Daisy Yellow has some, um, she calls it slow journaling, where you, you draw a box and then you draw like wavy squiggly lines and then you fill the lines completely with your writing and you kind of meditate on it. And so this page is done in that style. And then so is this, and I, I kind of went through some slow journaling stuff. And then I haven't, this, I, I will probably never finish this journal. I've got some, you know, I've got some writing on here, some more collage and smeared paint, and yeah, I'll never finish it. I'll never fill it up. Oh, um, no one tried to exclude me. They excluded someone else. Um, this person went on a rant and a rave and and called someone's art shit and it I was very offended by that so to me art journaling is really for everyone whether regardless of whether or not you're you consider yourself an artist or um, all you want to do is you know something like like this you want to write you want to add some color that's art journaling to me just as much as as this is I mean this is paint collage um, photographs um, drawing and painting 
It's not, you know, I used to um, get upset about not finishing my, my journals and my sketchbooks and stuff. And then I got to a point where it's just like, if, if I feel like I'm done, like this journal, you know, there was a lot of emotion wrapped up in this journal in terms of, of, of what was going on with my, my father-in-law <clears throat> and then um, Nano Jomo um, and then the whole Susie Blue issue and <clears throat> and and all of that was in here this was a um it, it started out as a really like thoughtful journal a lot of photographs little pockets and things a lot of thinking and then it, it got it got really active and it got it got angry um and then you know it got less angry and and then i felt like it was resolved like some of the times when i'm working in my art journal i feel like uh, I'll I'll work through something in it, and then once I've worked through that, I don't want to go back to it. I want to move on to a new journal, which is why I've got seven billion journals on my shelf. Hey, Urian. Um, I don't know. Do I have any more down here? I don't. I, I haven't really brought many of them down here. They're mostly upstairs. I keep them over my desk because I refer back to them. Yeah, I don't have anything that I haven't put up on, on YouTube already. Yeah, I, I think that sometimes... Um, you know, when, you're, when you work on a journal, it's just... You get to that point where you're done with it. And with this one, I was definitely done. Time to move on. So that one's finished. I'll do a flip through of that um, later. Let's see what time is it, 7.30? All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna stop recording anyway. <laughs>